Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Today we'll discuss uh, different diseases of uh, adrenal gland. And most importantly, the main emphasis will be on the Cushing syndrome. The learning objectives of this lecture are to have the basic concept about adrenal hormones, brief outline of uh, adrenal diseases, what is the etiology of the Cushing syndrome and how it is diagnosed in the lab. And then the, how different tests used for the Cushing syndrome are interpreted and which tests should be carried out for proper diagnosis. The adrenal gland basically consists of uh, two components. One is the cortex and the second is the medulla, which differ in their development, structure and function. Beneath the capsule, the adrenal is a narrow layer of uh, zona glomerulosa and equally narrow zona reticularis is present adjacent to the adrenal medulla and an intervening part is the zona fasciculata i will see this uh, in detail it synthesizes uh, three hormones three different types of the steroids number one is the aldosterone and then fasciculator producing the cortisol and then reticularis producing the androgens. The medulla is composed of the chromaffin cells which synthesizes and secretes catecholamines mainly epinephrine. Now this portion is about 80% of the total adrenal gland and medulla consists of about 20% of the total adrenal gland. These are the main secretory products and these are the different zones. Yeah, this you already have read it and have, must be having the concept uh, in the first, second year. The hormones uh, basically are the mineral corticoids by the zona glomerulosa, which is the mainly the aldosterone and glucocorticoids, cortisol by the zona fasciculata and sex hormones, testosterone and estradiol, by zona reticularis. Then mainly epinephrine by the adrenal medulla, by chromaffin cells. These are the hormones of the adrenal glands. We will be more focused towards the glucocorticoids, in particular the cortisol, which is very important in our daily life. Although other hormones also play a lot of role. Whenever there is a stress in the hypoglycemia, there is a production of the corticotropin releasing hormone from the hypothalamus. Then it leads to the production of the ACTH by hypothalamophysial portal system and anterior pituitary is involved in that one. It directly acts on the adrenal cortex to produce the cortisol, which leads to the different target tissue actions like increases the fat in the protein breakdown, increases blood glucose, and many other anti-inflammatory effects. This is the inhibitory arrow. If there is excess of the cortisol, then this will directly act on hypothalamus to produce less amounts of the CRH and also to the pituitary to produce less amount of the ACTH. Then how the feedback control is there? First of all, the decreased blood levels of the adrenal corticoids like stress, it leads to production of the CRH, 
corticotropin releasing hormone by the help of hypothalamus. Then anterior pituitary gland secretes ACTH. It leads to adrenal cortex secretion of the hormones like cortisol. And same is the feedback hormone secretion suppressed via negative feedback, which you uh, negative feedback is that process by which the hormone secretion is suppressed. There are different disorders of the adrenocortical function, like hypersecretion and hyposecretion. Cortisol producing the Cushing syndrome, aldosterone producing the Kohn syndrome or primary hyperaldosteronism and endogenous congenital adrenal hyperplasia adrenocortical carcinoma. These are the diseases which are due to the excess production of the hormones. When there is hypofunctioning or the hyposcretion of adrenal gland, then primary adrenal disorders, example, Addison's disease or congenital adrenal hyperplasia. And secondly, adrenal insufficiency secondary to the pituitary diseases. This will be the secondary causes. Now, Cushing syndrome, it is a very important question and important conditions which we have to differentiate from different other diseases. So, Cushing syndrome basically is uh, metabolic disorders caused by overproduction of cortisol by the adrenal cortex. There are two components. One is the Cushing syndrome, and second is the Cushing disease. We have to differentiate between the two because Cushing syndrome is excess cortisol levels due to any cause. Cushing disease is the excess cortisol due to pituitary adenoma. This must be clear in your mind, and whenever you are asked in the viva, you must not confuse between these two terms. You may be asked the cause of the Cushing disease and you may be asked the causes of the Cushing syndrome. Now, what are the causes of Cushing syndrome? If we take up this one, if there is exogenous administration of steroids, which is also called autogenic. Autogenic means by medications. If there is prolonged administration, then there will be the ACTG and glucocorticoids present in that one. And then there is an endogenous component. The causes of the endogenous can be further subdivided into two major categories. One is the ACTH dependent and second is the ACTH independent. If we see among these the hypothalamic lesions, first may be the increased CRH, corticotropin releasing hormone production, and second is the pituitary lesions. Now, this is the main thing which is the pushing disease, which may be due to the microadenoma or macroadenoma in the anterior pituitary. In these conditions, there will be increased levels of the ACTH. Then another category is, which is important to differentiate when we are doing the interpretation of the test. Then there is ectopic lesions, oat cell carcinoma, carcinoid of the thymus, pancreatic carcinoma, neuroplastoma, Wilms tumor. These may be the causes of the ectopic production of the increased amount of the ACTH. So these are the ACTH dependent. Then one cause is ACTH independent. Then in which, where is involvement of the adrenal gland? There is no involvement of the pituitary or the hypothalamus, adenoma and the carcinoma of the adrenal and Albright syndrome. These are the in which conditions in which there is a less amount of the ACTH present. This you will appreciate in the further slides. Then this these ACTH levels are very important for differentiation of these causes. 
exogenous that is the most common cause and ACTH pituitary adenoma is about 70% of the Cushing diseases due to this one. Then glucocorticoid producing adrenal neoplasm, adenoma and carcinoma about 20% of that. Then ectopic production of the ACTH neoplasms like uh, we discussed in the bronchogenic carcinoma at about 10%. These are the causes of the Cushing syndrome. And as we discussed in the previous slide, that Cushing disease is due to the ACTH producing pituitary adenoma and increased amount of ACTH level in the leading to the increased amount of the cortisol. That is the Cushing disease. Now, Cushing disease most common form of the endogenous endogenous Cushing syndrome. If we consider the exogenous, then the there is administration of the steroids from outside. The tumor grows within the pituitary gland and produces excessive amounts of the ACTH. It travels to the blood to the adrenal glands located above the kidney. And adrenal glands release excessive amounts of the cortisol which travels throughout the body. The high level of the cortisol builds up over time to cause the sign and symptoms of the Cushing syndrome, which may be physical, emotional, and cognitive. The ectopic ACTH syndrome is the form of the Cushing syndrome in which benign or malignant tumor arise in places other than the pituitary. If it had been in the pituitary, then it could have been the Cushing disease, leading to the excessive release of the ACTH and ultimately cortisol in the blood. As I said in earlier, it's about the 10 to 15 percent of the Cushing syndrome. This we have discussed. These are the three major causes of that. Topic ACTH syndrome. Hydrogenic, in which synthetic forms of the cortisol, such as prednisolone and dexamethasone, are administered exogenously. Hydrogenic originates from the Greek and literally translates to mean born from the healer. It is given by the doctor or by some medication due to some other disorders. Then there is a term which is called pseudo Cushing syndrome, condition in which symptoms mimic like Cushing syndrome are present without the tumor that leads to the increased level of the cortisol, in which three categories may be alcohol, obesity, and depression. These can be very easily differentiated due to the different uh, levels of the hormones and uh, sign and symptoms and the history. Now, hyperadrenalism or the increased level of the adrenal hormones or particularly the cortisol, it leads to uh, clinical presentation with having effects on the different body parts like truncal obesity or central obesity, moon faces, supraclavicular fat, fat and buffalo hump. These are the important sign by which you can diagnose whenever you see a patient coming in the OPD. Then thinning of the skin with facial plethora, easy bruising, and malicious stria. Then on muscle, then there may be proximal muscle weakness and atrophy, wasting of the extremities. Then on bone, it may lead to the osteoporosis and the fractures. These are the features which can be caused by the excess amount of the cortisol level. And keeping in mind these features, you can attempt the scenarios very easily. Uh, these may be the key features for your uh, solving of the SEQ or the MCQ. 
then on CBS there may be hypertension, congestive heart failure, hyperlipidemia, diabetes, on reproductive. So having cortisol in mind, it can have a lot of clinical presentations, gonadal dysfunction and menstrual irregularities, immunity increased of the rate of the infections, over wound healing, then disturbances like depression, emotional lability, irritability, sleep disturbances, these are all the psychological effects of the increased level of the retinal hormone. So this is important slide in the sense that you have to differentiate between the different stria. It is the central obesity over there and broad purple stretch marks. In this diagram, there is skin stria, it's a closer view, due to the hypercortisolism and are often wide and purple, which contrast with the narrow and pale or pink stria of the rapid weight gain. So from obesity, we have to differentiate. These are broader and they are not so broad. And uh, Look at the skin, which is thin and brittle in elderly patient, and then hyperpigmentation of the knuckles in a patient with the ectopic ACTH excess. These are the some features, skin manifest manifestations of a patient with the Cushing syndrome. If you keep this in mind, and uh, in other pictures, you can easily differentiate or uh, pinpoint the diagnosis. These are the abdominal strias, central fat deposition, and then thinning of the limbs, which is the feature of that one. Then easy bruising also there. Now, and if you just consider this picture in mind, the personality changes can be there, hyperglycemia, moon faces, CNS irritability. These are the different increase different symptoms and signs, fluid uh, sodium and the fluid retention leading to the edema, then thin extremities, central lupacity. In females, there may be amenorrhea, hirsutism, thin skin, then osteoporosis may be there. Just keep in mind this picture and the signs and symptoms of these due to the uh, excess cortisol level. Now we come to the lab diagnosis. This is very important and uh, you must know the basic hormones which are required to diagnose basic tests. For that, first of all, you must have keep in mind, these are the three categories. Number one is the free serum cortisol level, 8 a.m. and at midnight or the evening level total serum cortisol level in the blood. This is free cortisol level, serum cortisol, this is the total. Then in urine, 24 hours urinary cortisol is also measured. These reference ranges are for your uh, information that you must keep in your mind. Sometimes these are not given, but mostly in the questions they are given. In saliva, it is also tested cortisol level at 7 to 9 a.m., then 3 to 5 p.m., these are the values. One thing you have to remember over here, whenever there is Cushing syndrome, there is loss of the diurnal variation. Circadian rhythm, rhythm is lost in that. This is the most important point in diagnosis. If we keep in mind, we have to get the samples at proper intervals. Sometimes you have to first only go for the night level, which is the lesser amount, but if that is increased, then you can have the clue that patient is suffering from some. For evaluation, first of all, we have to exclude the use of the exogenous or the external glucocard administration. Then timing of the cortisol sampling is very important. At what time? At 8 a.m. in the morning or at 6 
in the evening. This timing is important because if we measure it is high in the morning and then low in the evening, then we may not be able to diagnose the case properly. Basic screening test to confirm the hypercortisolism is late night salivary cortisol level, but it is not routinely done. It's a little bit uh, difficult technique to get the saliva, but it is the ideal test. Then 24 hours urinary free cortisol, which is also a little bit cumbersome process uh, in the sense to collect the free uh, 24 hour urine for the patient. So now as the techniques have developed, we mainly prefer on the measurement of the serum cortisol or the free cortisol level in the blood. Then there is one test which is called overnight single dose dexamethasone expression test in which one milligram is given at night and next day the level of the cortisol is measured. Then its suppression is seen if there is suppression or if there is no suppression then we have to differentiate between the two two pathways where we have to leave then moreover the acth level is also measured it is increased in pituitary and ectopic conditions and it is decreased in adrenal adenoma here you must emphasize that ACTH level, the cortisol level will be increased. The ACTH level in pituitary and the ectopic pushing diseases or syndrome will be increased. But if it is due to the adrenal adenoma, which is getting the cortisol, then ACTH level will be decreased because of the feedback mechanism. Then next test is the high dose dexamethasone test in which 2 mg 6 hourly is given for 2 days. Then cortisol level measured at 8 am on day 0 and day 2. If there is partial suppression of the cortisol more than 50% confirms pituitary cause Cushing disease. I repeat it. If there is partial suppression of the cortisol, more than 50% of that is expressed, then it is pituitary Cushing disease. If there is failure of the suppression, it suggests the ectopic ACTH syndrome. This is important to remember that ectopic ACTH production by bronchogenic or other hormones, pancreatic or carcinoid thymus, the, uh, these are the conditions which are under no control. They are autonomous secreting the ACTH. Then this is another test which is not required, but in some difficult cases where it is not uh, properly categorized due to the borderline cases, then the CRH test, the, the corticotropin releasing hormone stimulation test is done under microgram bovine CRH IV is given. Serum ACTH and the cortisol measured for the two hours. Increase ACTH and cortisol pituitary disease. No response, then it is ectopic. Again, you must appreciate the basic mechanism, how it is produced. And if we give from the outside, already it is being secreted by normally. But if we give this to us, then if there is increased ACTH and cortisol, then it is pituitary cushion disease. And if there is no response, then ectopic ACTH syndrome. If diagnosis of the Cushing syndrome has been established, then next step is to find out the cause. As we, as we discuss in the etiology, there are many causes of that. The ACT, serum ACTH level plays the role. If it is low or undetectable, the ACTH independent cause, adrenal cause is most likely adrenal adenoma. If I then Cushing disease or the ectopic. Now, between these two conditions, if the ACTH level is high, then high dose dexamethasone test is to be done, which we 
can discuss this one. This is the most sensitive test for the differentiation between these two conditions. So we have three things to keep in mind. Number one is your timing of the sample. Number two is the level of the cortisol. Number three is the level of the serum ACTH. Common causes and summary of the findings. If there is adrenal ligand, urinary free cortisol will be high. High dose dexamethasone test, it is not, there is not no suppression. ACTH level will be low. There is no need of that one, but it is negative in that. The adrenal ligand with these two things, you can easily differentiate. If there is pituitary micro or macroadenoma, the urinary free cortisol is always high. In microadenoma, it is suppressed, but in macroadenoma, it is not suppressed. High dose dexamethasone test. But ACTH level is high in both, and CRH test is positive in both. And in ectopic, it is negative CRH test. This is very rarely done because patient presents with many clinical symptoms, which is quite sufficient uh, sporting evidence along with the cortisol level and the ACTH. And if there is exogenous, the urinary free cortisol will be low. This is important to remember. It is only low in exogenous and it is not suppressed. The ACTH level is low. This is CR test is negative. So from exogenous administration and between these two, very easily differentiation can be done. The differentiation is mainly between the pituitary cause, which is the Cushing disease and the ectopic, in which CRH is positive, it is negative. In this ectopic, it is not spaced, high dose dexamethasone, especially. What other investigations can be used for uh, diagnosis of the uh, adrenal disorders? Ultrasonography, looking for the adrenal adenoma or carcinoma, CT, MRI, abdomen, then for the pushing disease, CT, MRI, head, looking for the pituitary and micro and macro adenoma, bilateral inferior petrosal blood sampling for ACTH. This is the most sensitive test, but it is not routinely performed. It's difficult to perform, but if the condition is not properly diagnosed and we have to focus on this one, then this test can be performed. Then for the ectopic, oat cell carcinoma, bronchial carcinoid, chest x-rays, CT chest, abdomen, these are the other investigations which may be helpful in that. So in Cushing syndrome, the approach to the patient with the reference to the clinical features, number two, the lab diagnosis involving the different tests like cortisol level, ACTH level, urinary free cortisol, salivary, cortisol levels and ACTH level, these must be kept in mind along with these parameters like ultrasound and CT MRI. Now, how we approach this one? Approach to the patient with the question, if it is suspected, first perform 24 hours urinary free cortisol or overnight dexamethasone. Then on this basis, it can be cushion can be excluded or it is not excluded. If it is not excluded, then 48 hours or low dose dexamethasone. It's a patient test, morning and the midnight cortisol level. Then there is no only periodic follow-up is required if the cushion is excluded. Because if still the clinical features are present. Then if it is confirmed that it may be the case of the cushion syndrome, then we'll go for the plasma T ACTH. If detectable, ACT is dependent. If undetectable, adrenal cause. Then we'll go for the ultrasound, CT, adrenal, adrenal vein sampling, which is also not routinely done. Then 48 hours, high dose dexamethasone suppression, not suppressed. Then we'll go for the chest X-ray and CT scan. 
and if it is pressed in the pituitary source mri pituitary then inferior pituitary and this is the brief summary of the test and the approach to the patient with the pushing syndrome and just one question a 29 year old female patient presents to the opd with rounded face hirsutism upper body obesity easily bruised skin severe fatigue muscle weakness and anxiety <clears throat> this is the long scenario but having a lot of symptoms she also complains of the irregular periods as being long term asthmatic she has been prescribed prednisone for the past 2 years now immediately it should come to your mind then there is exogenous findings on examination revealed high fasting blood glucose and these are the effects of the these are the all blood high blood pressure cortisol serum cortisol level were below normal which one of the following is the most likely explanation to account for the patient symptom symptoms two major key points are there prednisone for the past two years serum cortisol level low and all the features of the increased cortisol what are the options decreased level of the insulin increased level of the testosterone decrease secretion of the acth ex excess exogenous glucocorticoid hormone increased hepatic metabolism of the steroid hormone i think it is very clear and you must answer exogenous glucocorticoid we'll also discuss other questions in the next lectures but this is just for your thought process that such type of the scenarios are common in your exam thank you very much